Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenerz and today I have another quick gameplay video for you guys. I ask you what style of gameplay videos you prefer and try to my best to implement your input. So this video will show the opening hands and give a brief explanation on why the players kept their hands and I'm also doing a voiceover. So without further ado, let's have a look at the opening hands. Kiko is first on his Urza power scepter list. His starting hand consists of a snow-covered island, mystic sanctuary, Mystic Remora, Everflowing Chalice, Sapphire Medallion, Transmute Artifact, and back to basics. Kiko decided to keep this hand because he has a turn 1 Mystic Remora going first, which will draw him a ton of cards. He also has some cost reduction, a very strong stacks piece with back to basics, and a way to turn Everflowing Chalice into a much bigger threat using Transmute Artifact. I am second on my Omnath Rainbow Evolution list. My starting hand consists of a Misty Rainforest, Arid Mesa, Polluted Delta, Carpet of Flowers, Ledger Shredder, Ephemerate and Emil. I decided to keep this hand because I had reliable land drops for what could possibly be a longer game against Urza. Also the carpet would eventually give me tons of mana that helps to grind value through stacks pieces. Ledger Shredder could draw me into more cards or fuel my graveyard, while Emil and Ephemerate would make it more easy for me to combo off once I draw into Dockside or a creature tutor. Charlie goes third with his Bomb Malcolm Kiddus list. His starting hand consists of Steam Vents, Flooded Strand, Cavern of Souls, Mana Crypt, Counterspell, Slip Out the Back and Pull from Tomorrow. Charlie kept this hand because it gives him a turn 1 uncounterable Malcolm. He has some interaction for the following turns and some card draw for when he runs out of cards. Memo goes last with his take on Roger Tavash Turbo Storm. He is currently grinding tons of games with this list because he wants to play it in an upcoming tournament. His starting hand consists of Mox Ember, Skull Clamp, Deflecting Spot and Jeska Squill. For his London Mulligan he put Kuldotha Rebirth, Blood Pad and Final Fortune under his library. He kept this hand after mulling down to 4, because with some luck he can go for an early Jeska's Will or, if he doesn't draw into any kind of mana, he can use Skull Clamp to draw at least 2 more cards by equipping it to Rock Rock. And now let's start with the actual game. Kiku draws for turn. He plays a Snow Covered Island and taps it for a Mystic Remora. He passes his turn. I draw, I play Misty Rainforest and crack it for a Tropical Island to play a Carpet of Flowers. Do not pay for the fish, so Kiko gets to draw a card. I then pass my turn. Charlie draws for turn, plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Pirates, and then casts a Mana Crypt, which allows Kiko to draw a card. He then casts a Turn 1 Malcolm, which is uncounterable, and then passes. Memo draws for turn and plays a Blackleaf Cliffs. He casts Rock Rock and a Mox Ember, which allows Kiko to draw a card. He then casts a Skull Clamp, which again allows Kiko to draw a card. And will then pass his turn. Kiko untaps and decides to let the fish die in his upkeep. He then plays a Mox Opal, have a Flowing Chalice, an Arkham's Astrolabe, which allows him to draw a card. He then plays an Urza Saga and a Mox Diamond, pitching a Flooded Strand. Finally casts a Sapphire Medallion and passes his turn. I untap, draw for turn and target Kiko with my Carpet of Flowers, cast a Ledger Shredder and I follow it up with an Arid Mesa. I then pass my turn. Charlie untaps and draws a card. He plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Volcanic Island to cast Kedis. He then goes to combat, deals 2 damage to Memo and 2 damage to the table, creating 3 treasure tokens. He then passes his turn. Memo untaps, draws for turn plays the Verdant Catacombs and fetches for a Swamp. He then pays 3 mana to cast a Jeska's Will, targeting Charlie to create 6 red mana. He flips into a Demonic Tutor, peer into the Abyss and Kuldotha Rebirth. He casts Rebirth, which triggers the Ledger Shredder, allowing me to draw and discard a card. I discard a Dispel which allows me to put a 1-1 counter on my Ledger Shredder. Memo equips his Clamp to one of the Goblin Tokens, which will kill the Goblin Token and allow Memo to draw two cards. He then does it again to draw another two cards. And finally casts a Wheel of Fortune. Charlie reacts with a counter spell to which Memo has an answer in the form of Deflecting Swat. 
Charlie then casts a slip out the back, targeting his Malcolm, because he knows it will otherwise go to waste. I get another Ledger Shredder trigger, I discard an Ephemerate, slip out the back, Deflecting Swat and Counterspell Resolve, I crack my Arid Mesa for a Volcanic Island. And Memo discards a Scalding Tarn, Cabal Pit and an Reanimate. Kiko discards a Back to Basics, Transmute Artifact, Impostamac and Mystic Sanctuary. I discard a Hellout Fountain, Polluted Delta, Eldamri's Call, Underworld Breach and Emil the Blessed. Charlie discards a Pull from Tomorrow, Gilded Drake, Faithless Looting and a Steam Vents. We then all draw 7 new cards, but unfortunately Memo isn't able to continue his Storm turn, so he has to pass. Kiko untaps and draws for turn. He then plays another Snow Covered Island, taps for a Grim Monolith, he then pays 3 to cast Urza, gets a Construct Token, and then pays 3 mana to transmute a Mulder Mixture into a Power Artifact. I also have a Knife Trigger, which I forgot, but I'm able to do it now. And I draw a card and discard a land. Kiko then passes his turn. I untap and draw for turn. In my first main phase, I target Kiko with my Capita Flowers to float 2 green mana. Play Mana Confluence, Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing my Ledger Shredder as an additional cost. Kiko reacts with an offer you can't refuse. But I have an answer and I cast a Muddle the Mixture. Eldritch Evolution resolves. I'm able to get a Doxate Extortionist into play, creating 10 treasure tokens. I then cast a Chain of Vapor, targeting my Doxite. I sacrifice a Mana Confluence to copy Chain of Vapor and put Carpet of Flowers back into my hand. I crack two treasures to recast my Doxite Extortionist, which puts me at 17 treasures. I then pay one to cast the Carpet again. I pay 3 to cast a Spellseeker, tutoring up a Finale of Devastation into my hand. I go to my second main phase, target Kiko again with my carpet to make 2 green mana. I then pay the green and crack 4 treasures to cast Finale of Devastation to get Emil into play. I can now flicker Dockside to make infinite treasures. I can then cast my commander, flicker Omnath to draw my deck, and then I can kill the board with Dryad Arbor. And that's game. What a dope game. I enjoyed it so much. Not only because I won, but because every deck was able to show what its strengths are and well, I root three of these decks so I would be happy with any one of them winning. Kiko's turn one fish drew him into an incredible amount of mana. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to stop my dock side or slow down the game enough to profit off his initial boost. Charlie's turn one Malcolm into turn two Caddis also gave him tons of treasures. This is super scary because he can easily drop turn three Niv Mizzet or combo off with some weird pirate loop. Memo was able to turn his 4 card starting hand into an incredible storm turn. With some better flips or just a single black mana he would have been able to continue and might have even cast a turn 2 ad nauseum out of literally nowhere. This is the power of Rakdos Nos. My Omnath list could shine with its incredible card quality. I had a solid opener, drew into a lot of good cards with Ledger Shredder and the turn to Wheel of Fortune again gave me lots of high quality cards that allowed me to sequence a win through Dockside although Emil and Breach were already gone. All in all, this game took only 3 turns, and of course, the absolute MVP was obviously Dockside Extortionist. If you too want to play some games with us, hop over to my Discord server. If you like what I do and want to support me, please consider becoming a patron. You can find both links in the description box down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. This is Eisenerz and Auf Wiedersehen.